So what are the goals of Pentecostal preaching? Well, I want us to go to Acts and I want us to take a look at how men and women in the book of Acts responded to the preached word. First, Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost. As Peter preached on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter two, verses 37 and 38. Now, when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart. Again, this is the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Peter has just told these people in Jerusalem that Jesus whom you crucified is in fact the Lord and God and Savior of the world. And when they realize what they have done, the people of Jerusalem are pierced to the heart. The Holy Spirit pierces that sword that is sharper, that the word that is sharper than any two-edged sword pierces deep into our hearts and it cuts deep into our flesh. And this is not simply a mere thorn prick. This is as if someone has stabbed us in the heart with a spear or a sword. This is a deep pain of the realization of our sin, of the realization of our need for God. They're pierced to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? And the first word of the gospel is repent, to change our heart toward God, to change our mind toward God, to turn our lives around and about face. In fact, that the Greek term uh, for repentance is actually a military term that, that means to, to um, turn about, about face. And that's what repentance is. Repent and be baptized. We're wanting the congregation to be moved to repent and then to respond in water baptism. Be baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Because that water baptism is their initiation into the faith. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Water baptism anticipates the fullness of the Holy Spirit. So there is this movement, there, there is this moving of, of responses, of repentance, of water baptism, of being filled with the Spirit that Peter anticipates as a goal of, of, of preaching on the day of Pentecost. In Acts chapter 10, when Peter is uh, preaching to the household of Cornelius, uh, Luke says that while Peter, in verse 44, Acts 10, 44, Luke says that while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of those who heard the word. That's what we're looking for. That is the response of Pentecostal preaching, that the preacher is re-experiencing the text, that we're bringing the congregation to re-experience the text, that the text is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And as the word of God is being proclaimed, the Holy Spirit falls upon the congregation. In Acts chapter 17, when the apostle Paul is presenting the gospel to the philosophers at Athens at Mars Hill, he is talking to them about the Lordship of Jesus Christ. He is talking to them about the resurrection of dead. And there are three responses to Paul's preaching. Acts chapter 17, verses 32 through 34. Now, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some began to sneer. It's always going to be the response of some. We're going to preach the gospel. We're going to proclaim the living and active word of God, and some will sneer. Others said, we'll hear you again. Some will sneer, but will smart, spark interest in others and they will come back to hear us again. Hopefully we will be able to win them at a subsequent opportunity. But notice the final response. But some men joined him and believed. That's why we preach. We don't preach to be sneered at. And we don't preach simply to engage in dialogue. The ultimate goal of our Pentecostal preaching of preaching in the Holy Spirit is to have people believe the gospel and join us in the mission of God.